part of this is an attempt to, it's not just the idea of having no standards to let people in, but it's an attempt to erase national boundaries and to eliminate the nation state as the organizing principle for, for the world order. Uh, and uh, and uh, that, that's why the Biden administration, you know, uh, uh, you know, basically does not protect our border. And, it, and talk about standards, we have like no standards. I mean, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the border is wide open. Um, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, that's where we are. Interesting. But I agree with you, certainly. And, and throughout most of our immigration history until recent days, I mean, even including up until the Clinton administration, you know, we were supposed to have standards and we were supposed to be bringing in people who would make a net contribution to the society. And immigration policy was supposed to advance the interests of the American people who are living here and help make all of our lives better. I was under that impression. So let's, yeah. let's talk about Russia but and Ukraine. If I may, yeah. because... As you're saying this, I'm thinking there's nobody more nationalistic that has American pride as this immigrant right here, mm -hmm. right? Born in Iran, made in America. And I found that seems to be true with most immigrants. They're lucky to be here. They're happy to be here. The, like one of the conversations you have with immigrants is you have no idea what it's like over there in Cuba, in Venezuela, in North Korea with our friend uh, uh, Yomi Park. I mean, we've, we've interviewed these people. You have no idea what's going on over there. So it, you're talking about the immigration policies. It seems to me that it's the Americans who are born here that are the ones who are a little anti-American, if you will, the, the far left of the uh, Democratic Party. They're the ones, in my estimation, they're the ones basically saying, oh, like, we're the bad people. We're the bad guys. They're kind of been indoctrinated or ingrained into this school of thought where the immigrants are like, dude, you have no idea what it's like out there. Could you speak to that a little bit? What are your thoughts on, on naturally born American citizens being a little more anti-American than even the immigrants you're referring to? Probably a lot more anti-American than the immigrants uh, that we're referring to. Those people who have experienced living in authoritarian or totalitarian regimes, you know, of course, really appreciate this country. They've had in their own lives the experience of what the alternative is, whereas Americans, especially American college students, you know, mm -hmm. tend to come from very comfortable middle class. Uh, they've all, they've never had uh, had to live under a totalitarian regime uh, or an authoritarian regime. Uh, you know, don't appreciate this country and our educational system. Uh, you know, uh, from the high school level all the way up, uh, you know, has been has is a is a has become a big brainwashing machine for leftist views, which includes anti-Americanism. Uh, I remember when I was uh, in graduate school. I mean, uh, and this was back in the 1980s. Uh, uh, you know, I had the experience. I mean, anti-Americanism was basically being taught back then, even then. In what year was that? Oh, uh, this was uh, 1983, sometime 1980, the early 1980s. You're saying anti-Americanism was taught in universities at this point? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the, the, there were uh, there were some conservative professors at that point, but the general uh, uh, attitude was to, well. To give you an example, required reading in a uh, in, in in one of our uh, in one of our courses, uh, history is literature, uh, you know, was uh, Eldridge Cleaver's Soul on Ice, okay? Uh, Cleaver was a Black Panther, uh, you know, violent activist, anti-American. He wanted to uh, uh, overthrow the government of the United States and establish, you know, uh, uh, you know a black uh, nation, a separate black nation uh, uh, in the old Confederacy, okay? And uh, and and his soul his soul on ice book is a is a diatribe against the racist evil America, and I remember at, challenging the professor who was teaching that book because this was, you know, Eldridge Cleaver's views trying to introduce us. And I said, you know, how come we're not reading uh, uh, how we're not re how come we're not reading Soul on Fire, you know, because uh, uh, Cleaver, you know, uh, uh, you know, after uh, I think he shot a cop or something like that. Uh, or committed some crime, uh, but he uh, he he uh, escaped and, uh, and and spent many years uh, living in Russia, uh, Cuba. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know. Uh, I don't think he went to China, but basically uh, authoritarian and totalitarian regimes. And then he went to the U.S. embassy and, and begged to come back to the United States. And uh, and when the complaint, and even if he had spent served served jail time, 
okay? Uh, and when he got off the plane, he kissed the tarmac, kissed the, kissed uh. the, literally kissed the ground of the United States, became a Christian, uh, you know, uh, and eventually ran as a Republican member of Congress in Los Angeles, uh, you know, lost. But his, his soul on ice, you know, is a warning to people who used to believe as he did that America is the greatest country on earth, that we should all be grateful here, and they did not teach that. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.